residents' life to add additional security to dorms. Students line up for fresh food and flowers at Wildcat Market. President Eli Capilouto discusses record enrollment at UK Board of Trustees meeting. UKPD reports a drug-related incident on campus. And Governor Andy Brashear bans conversion therapy in Kentucky. I'm Gianna Gallo. And I'm Owen Chesmore, and we have lots to catch you up on. This is Catching Up with the Colonel. The opinions as expressed on this podcast are the speaker's own and don't uphold the opinions expressed by the Kentucky Colonel. UK and Allied Universal Professional Campus Security Team partnered up to increase security on campus. Security officers will conduct community rounds in residence halls and at the William T. Young Library on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings, according to an email sent to the res to residents' life. The officers will be easy to identify wearing high visibility vests, black polo shirts or jackets, and black tactical pants. Did you receive an email about this? You know, I'm honestly not sure. Maybe I missed it, but I'm assuming because I think I, live... I missed it too, because <laughs> I did not get anything about the hiring of security officers. Well, I did. Okay. That, that was, I misspoke. I did receive the $18 million investing in safety initiatives right. from UK. And yes. I, I know it was like the blue lights, police presence, and I'm assuming they put security guards I think it was about there. Ally Universal, yes. that one. Yes, okay, I received that one yes. too. Yes, but I didn't know that they were going to be in residence halls or at Willie T. Right. And being an off-campus student, I'm, I'm very glad that they have resident, like for the residents, they know this because, right, a, a security guard will be in your possibly in your dorm or at least walking around it. Mm -hmm. But for an avid user for Willie T, I feel like I need to know this information. Plus, why are we like gatekeeping information to certain students? Like all students need to know right. this regardless if you live in a dorm or not. Because what if my one friend lives in a dorm and I'm visiting them or I'm going to the dorm to talk, you know, talk with somebody and now I'm getting questioned of I like I don't know, I just I wish that all students knew this information. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely like a lack of communication on that part. And also there's things in this email that you can like pick apart. Like um, we have there on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We don't know what their shifts are. We do know what they'll be wearing, which honestly I find is really helpful. Because that if is you helpful, see, right. Yeah, I like that information because if you're like in Willie T and you see someone who's older walking around wearing this kind of, black polo shirt and black tactical pants, you're going to be like, okay, who is this person? You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's good that they gave that information. But also, like, if students aren't aware about this, then it's going to be almost a bit jarring going into Willie T and seeing security there because as juniors, we know that we're not used to this. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And we just looked up Willie T's hours opened Monday through Thursday, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm just kind of – interested on what the shifts look like because what are technically evenings i consider evening like four or five o'clock but when we like set the t the clocks back does that change because the sun goes down earlier right so i don't know with it being 24 7 and they only work on thursday they start their days you know thursday friday saturday well thursday will you be there from seven till three a.m mm -hmm. or is it you know seven to ten seven at you know midnight friday they close friday and saturday willie t closes at eight so what does your shift look like right because for me it's not being for my me personally it's not feeling unsafe inside willie t it's fe feeling unsafe walking home right yeah lights are helpful seeing others but the idea of that oh there's police presence if something happens i can go to them they're mm -hmm. outside but having someone inside, I already feel safe inside Willie T because when you go in after public hours are closed, which I believe is 10 o'clock, 8 or 10 o'clock, yeah. you have to show your student ID to get in. Right. So I already feel safe knowing there's only students in here. Yeah. But I agree. I feel like that's something where I don't even know if they maybe just haven't decided this yet and they're trying to just like let students know. But I feel like if it's I like the days that they picked out because I think that Thursday, Friday and Saturday probably have I'm almost certain they have the highest rate of incidents. I mean, that would just make sense. So I think these are good days to have people around. 
But also, I'm just wondering if if you leave the library at 2 a.m., are you going to see a security guard there? Or is it just like, oh, they leave at 9 p.m. or something? Students line up for fresh food and flowers at Wildcat Market. Wildcat Market on Hilltop Lawn was hosted by UK South Farm Community Supported Agriculture and sponsored by the U Student Activity Board and the Student Government Association. The event allowed students to pick $12 worth of produce grown by the Organic Farming Unit at South Farm for free on Wednesday, September 11th. Students went through lines picking the produce they wanted, like watermelons, tomatoes, flowers, peppers, and garlic. This is a pretty fun event to go to. I love that they kind of host these things. Um, what would you get at this event if you were going? Okay, so I'm kind of, I completely agree. This, I honestly wish I went I to wish this I event. I wish I had gone, I know. I, I was like, out. who doesn't want fresh produce? And for me, I'm such a sucker for like fresh flowers, or not fresh, right. but um, just flowers. And I would have loved to see like the bouquets that they would have put together. And I definitely would have spent I think probably all the twelve dollars on just getting oh one hundred percent exactly. I mean it's free stuff. <laughs> but you know? I don't know, like peppers, garlic. I totally also get that. Like I would want to. I I don't know. I think this was a great event. What about you? Yeah, I also think it's a great event. Also, just as a student, like free stuff. I'm always going to be showing up, and yeah. also it's just an opportunity to find good ingredients to cook mm -hmm. with. I think it's just a fun event overall, and I really hope they do more events like this. I don't know, are there local farmer's markets around Lexington? See, that's something, because I know there's art on the town, which is the Fifth Third Pavilion. Yeah. But I didn't see any, well, I there. I guess there was some produce, but it wasn't a lot, but it was also like winters, and that's, I interviewed some people, and they were like, yeah, this is like our dead season, kind of, because it's February, and I was right. like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I think that's really like the only like farmer's market, but... I don't know. I just feel like all of the farmers markets are really far away. Uh -huh. And I don't, I have this debate in my head is if like farmers markets with organic food is cheaper or if just going to Kroger or Aldi or Walmart yeah. is cheaper. So I have this debate. I'm like, I really love the idea of a farmers market, but can my college uh, financial status afford that right i don't think it can <laughs> yeah no same here but also it's kind of funny because i feel like even if it was a, like a little bit more i just love the experience of going to these things so given that it's much more fun to go with like a friend and be like hey let's go get some food here part of that experience makes it worth it you know what i'm saying i completely agree again i really like that it w i not that i liked the limit of you only get 12 dollars to spend right. but it kind of is like you got to pick what you really want, and it yeah. makes you think like, okay, I can't get everything. I got to pick what I want: flowers, peppers, and garlic. I, yeah. If that was, if that makes twelve dollars, I would get those three things. Yeah. <laughs> the UK Board of Trustees held a board meeting on Friday, September thirteenth, where UK's President Eli Capilouto presented a preliminary enrollment report for 2024 and discussed multiple records being set. The 2024 fall semester saw a record number of 36,161 students enrolled on UK's campus, a 7% increase from 2023, according to Capilouto. Undergraduate enrollment has also seen record growth with 25,774 undergraduate students on campus, Last year, there were 23,971 undergraduate students. The 6,571 students in the first year class for fall of 2024 is also record breaking. Graduate enrollment and education has seen a 5.4% increase from two years ago, which was an, inc an increase from last year. However, Capilouto also brought up the number of underrepresented minorities and first generation students enrolled in UK for fall 2024. Enrollment of black or African American students has decreased by about 60 students based on our preliminary data, though the number of students enrolled identifying as Hispanic or Latino or two or more races has increased. What do you think of those statistics? That was a lot of numbers being thrown at you, but what do you what do you think? 
Yeah, it's definitely a ton of students who are coming in. I mean, it's just insane what the numbers are. It's interesting kind of the kind of the drop in certain demographic or groups um, and that wasn't really addressed, which is interesting. Um, but definitely just insane amount of people coming in and definitely raises questions about how is UK able to sustain having so many students come in with like housing, with food, and making sure that it kind of like, even just advisors and kind of those basic need kind of stuff, like how are they gonna fulfill those needs while accepting so many students? I completely agree. Going back to demographics, right? You have Hispanic and Latinos going up, Mm -hmm. but then you have 60 students that identify black or African-American decrease. And it is kind of a little strange to me that it wasn't, at least in the Colonel article, it wasn't, we weren't given more information. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious if this has to do with DEI disbanding. Um, I just wish there was a little bit more explanation on everything else increased. There was no decrease at all, right? Enrollment increased. This is another record-breaking freshman class for UK graduation. And what was it? Um, education has seen a 5.4 increase, right? We're seeing a trend in record-breaking increase, and then this kind of just dips. So I, I can't help but think it's linked to something with DEI, or I don't know. I want to plug our next special episode, which is a deep dive into DEI, where we bring on UK's spokesperson, Jay Blanton, and he answers all of the questions the colonel has had that you might possibly have. So be sure to tune into that. And we will definitely have a second episode with student perspectives, faculty, and possibly more. So make sure you stay tuned into that. UK Police Department alerted UK students of a report of a drug-related incident that occurred on campus on September 14th in a campus-wide email sent out on September 17th. According to the Crime Bulletin, quote, while on campus, the victim was given a drink and later learned that it contained a controlled substance, which led to them becoming ill and receiving medical attention. UK police and the appropriate campus units are actively investigating this matter. It raises a lot of questions, I think, for readers and listeners. Um, Like, for instance, what substance was it that this person was given? And definitely raises questions about, like, safety. Like, what should students be doing moving forward to stay safe? Yeah, I completely agree. I know we were talking before we started filming that, you know, this is now the fourth kind of major incident that has happened on campus. We've had the the shooting that, granted, yes, it was off campus, but it was really a street over the sidewalk next to campus. Uh, We had the robbery, sexual assault, and now somebody uh, pretty much getting slept a roofie. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I I don't know, it's, this kind of goes back to the security increase. Uh, The first article we talked about, what, what is going on on this campus? You know, yeah. it's, it, it is, it's kind of concerning. And where was this? Because I would like to know as a student, if I need to avoid certain areas when I'm walking home at night, because right. yes, it's a open drink that this, w- this woman was that, that she had, but I don't know some, the fact that somebody has this walking around campus, just roofies in their pocket. Like I don't want to get a Starbucks drink now. Right. Who knows what could be in it? Exactly. Um, also what are, I'm not, how do I say this? Um, what has UKPD done? Because we're still waiting on the shooters across campus to be updated and Mm -hmm. we've received no update. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of misleading. Like, oh yeah, we're looking into it, but there's never an update. Even in our kernel articles, we'll always like, yeah, we have more, we'll we'll get more information when we no more right and none of them have been updated because we don't know more right so i feel like this is going to be just like another sweep under the rug oh yeah we're investigating it yeah well i'm glad she's okay but what are you going to do about this Mm -hmm. and it's very unsettling for students when they're wondering are the people who are responsible for these actions getting the kind of i mean treatment that they or the justice is being carried out 
so that these students can feel protected and safe and know that people who do this kind of stuff are getting, you know, put in the place that they should. And that doesn't seem to be happening, or if it is, students don't really know. So it's a very, like, unsettling place to leave this situation at. Um, obviously, updates can come up moving forward, but mm -hmm. given the fact that we have this shooting going on and students aren't being updated about it, and there's a rise in crime, it's wondering, are, it leaves students wondering, are these things being addressed as they should? Well, and on top of all of that you, that you said, this was this happened on the 14th, which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And what we were not aware of it until Tuesday the 17th. Right. That's three days of us completely not knowing that yeah. something had happened on yeah. campus involving, you know, a, a woman getting, you know, a drug-related incident. Plus, drugs are not allowed on this campus. So... What is going on? Right. And I again, why why were we notified three days after? Yeah. Why do not why do I not know about the security increase on campus at Willie T? Right. And now I just oh there they are here they are walking around in the library. Yeah. Midday. So I don't know. I'm not sure what the process is, but I feel like three days later seems almost too long yeah. for me, especially when this is a situation that they know about like the day it happened or at least the day after or something like that, you know? Yeah. And the fact that we don't hear about it until three days later, and that would probably change maybe some ways that people are thinking about going out, like how they're staying safe. They're like, oh, this happened recently. How can I protect myself and my friends? And if people don't know about it, they can't prepare for that situation. I completely agree. Kentucky Governor Andy Brashear signed on September 18th an executive order that will ban conversion therapy for minors in the Commonwealth. It will prohibit minors from having to undergo conversion therapy and will also prevent state and federal funds from being used to fund the therapy. The order will also address medical boards and will look at the possibility of revoking the licenses from those who practice conversion therapies on minors. In a statement to the Courier Journal, Brashear said, This is not about red or blue. It's not about politics at all. And to me, it's not even about gender or sexuality. It's about protecting our youth from an incubate practice that hurts them. What do you think about this uh, executive order being banned. Yeah, it's definitely, I would say, a step forward for Kentucky. And I really appreciate how he was like, this is not like a political issue, like something that has to like divide people in Kentucky. It's just a matter of like making sure that like people are treated with respect. And so definitely a good sign in the way that Kentucky is moving forward. I completely agree. Again, like you said, and how Brashear said, you know, this isn't a political matter, not red nor blue. It's simply about protecting children and no child should deserve this treatment. So I completely agree. I think it's a great step forward for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We hope you liked this episode, and if you want to gather any more information on these Kernel articles, check out our website at kykernel.com, and be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. That's X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Spotify. Thanks for catching up with the Kernel. We'll see you next week.